Deputy Prime Minister is preparing to address the Kingdom's counter-proposal. Nicole Richardson explains her issues with the new normal of sending her children to school. And Learning Unlimited says their school will be opened as planned. Those are the headlines for Thursday, August the 13th, 2020. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the police department of St. Martin showed up at the Learning Unlimited Preparatory School in Cay Hill to close the school on Wednesday morning. Learning Unlimited opened its doors to welcome its students back to school as per their schedule on Wednesday morning and as students arrived on campus to start their first day, several police officers were present to inform the school that it will have to close its doors. The students left the premises upon instruction of police officers. The school then contacted its legal team, and after consultation with its legal team, the school reopened its doors and called the students back to attend their classes. The school has since been operating sometime around 9 a.m., Online classes were not, however, interrupted during this time and continued as normal. In a press release issued yesterday, head of the school, Dornesh Alcott, stated that the school will be open as planned and the school will communicate during the course of the day with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Public Health to solve any differences in the way forward for not only educating students. And with the reopening of schools on the island yesterday, Wednesday, President of the Windward Islands Teachers Union, Mrs. Claire Elshot, was asked by Stephen Cerulean earlier today if they were able to visit the various schools to get a feeling of what is happening at the various learning institutions. I had a Zoom meeting scheduled for the, the members and the, school, the Zoom meeting was held on the Saturday before school opened. And our objective of that meeting was not really to condemn any school boards or to criticize any school boards. We wanted to get a feeling from our members, the persons that we represent, how they felt about going back into teaching, whether it was um, virtual or it was face-to-face, with the developments that was happening in the community. I have read the statement from the minister, and that is why I ask you, did school start, yes or no? Because start for who? I am still, with the amount of households that we can recognize, it is heartbreaking that this morning, I am still hearing from parents. They are up and now wondering where they can get a device for their child to be able to start. S uh, schools like um, the, the Christian Hillside School, for example, they are talking, but I have witnessed a parent that don't have anything this morning is saying, I'm trying to get in contact with the principal to see if they can facilitate my child. So it, it all depends on which children and which schools have started because how would you be able to start a school effectively with online teaching if you're not sure that little Johnny and little Susie and everybody. So no child, if a minister cannot ensure that no child is left behind in the process that he is is um, how you would say it, that he is plotted out, then he should shut up because there are too many children that are left behind. What are we doing just for to be on a fantasy island of St. Martin saying we are giving virtual uh, teaching where on, on Monday the Mac School reported, and this came in the newspaper, the Mac School reported that they were totally, you know, 
Not that they were not organized, but they were left without internet connection to do their teaching. So it was a total frustration and chaos. And this is something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. And the only thing is that would make highlight is that the police went to close down LU, the outer order. That's not a police job. They didn't have any fight at LU. So why would they go to close down LU? Um, Basically, we are in a society where we didn't plan, and when you don't plan sufficiently, you plan to fail. It's either, it had to be that schools will be extended a little longer to be out until they have the control over what is happening in the community because this came from experts. You have to control that. Parents are fearful. Those that don't have transport, they want to send their children to school, but they are fearful for the child taking the bus and being able to contract. There are so many scenarios. So therefore, let us be real. And parent Nicole Richardson, a mother of four, says she cannot afford to pay for the internet and to have to pay school fees. Speaking at the anti-poverty platform, Consumers Coalition Press Briefing, Earlier today, she spoke about the issues surrounding the costs of sending her children to school. My issue is, okay, I'm a mom of four where I have two kids, at, uh, two kids that attend primary school and two that is in secondary school. And I have a son that um, this is actually his first year entering the primary, the secondary school. And my issue is, Okay, I'm a working mother. I make 1,500 guilders a month, where school fees is nine, 900 guilders. Okay? Now, they're talking about where we can pay at least half of the school fees before registering the children. Now, at this time of the year, okay, we are going through pandemic or coronavirus issues, okay? Where, as a parent, we're gonna get this money from, okay, I just start to work. So what happened to these parents was, well, it's not working at all. So you cannot register your child unless you come up with some kind of money to get these children into school. This is one of my issues. Now, okay, I'm a working mother, 1,500 guilders. I have other children still to take care of, bills to pay, where GB, water, food, and internet okay now they have a system where they're gonna do online classes I'm making 1500 guilders my internet is hundred and fifty dollars which is 270 guilders now when I pay rent food how am I gonna get this done where now I have to pay at least half of the amount for my child to be registered to school, into school, and still provide internet for them to be in school, do school in, online. I actually had to get my internet cut so I could be able to register my child. Now, I have to find money now to put back the internet where my child could do school in. And in COVID-related news, as of August the 12th at 4 p.m., St. Martin has confirmed 29 new cases of persons who have tested positive for the coronavirus COVID-19. The new total of confirmed cases now stands at 248. Of the active cases, the Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 94 people in home isolation. The Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labour VSA, the Honourable Richard Panaflex stated, we now have 129 active cases of persons who have contracted COVID-19. Five patients are currently hospitalized and one patient is isolated and is being monitored. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 17. And still to come, Deputy Prime Minister is preparing to address the Kingdom's counter proposal. We'll have the details of that story and much more with SFM Daily
EBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Welcome back viewers. And as we continue now with more news for you at this time, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Egbert Doran, is preparing to address the Kingdom's counter proposal. The Deputy Minister says that the Council of Ministers would like to present a counter proposal to the Kingdom Council of Ministers on Friday, August 14th, 2020. He elucidates further. In reference to the proposed entity, the Council of Ministers finalized their strategic approach to the discussion that will be held in the, in the upcoming Kingdom Council of Ministers meeting Friday, August 14, 2020. This approach is one whereby St. Martin Council of Ministers would like to present the Kingdom Council of Ministers with a counter proposal based on the proposal that is currently on the table. Yesterday, a letter elucidating the sentiments and views of the Council of Ministers was sent to the Prime Minister Rutter, which is the chair of the Kingdom Council of Ministers, and the State Secretary, Mr. Knops, after this was approved by the Council of Ministers of St. Martin. In the letter, St. Martin outlined their views on how the countries can come to a consensus together and explain how the approach that would be presented by St. Martin is more in line with the Kingdom statute and also with St. Martin's constitution. The proposal includes a three-layer approach regulating financial supervision of these finances and the executions of the reforms, reform measures. In further elucidations, wider liquidity support and the financial support for the reform should be separated. Today, August 12th, we received official notice that our request was added to our agenda and has been approved. Our Minister Plenipotentiary will present St. Martin's counterproposal in the Reichsministerrat, as I mentioned, on August 14th upcoming, which is this Friday. This will serve as a starting point for further discussions with the Netherlands. Meanwhile, members of the anti-poverty platform says that there seems to be a lack of response from government. They also feel that they have not had the opportunity to go over the proposed document. At their weekly press briefing, they were asked by Stephen Cerulean of the Voice of St. Martin's News, what are some of the counter proposals coming from the Chamber of Labor Unions? The Prime Minister has asked us to understand that what the State Secretary Knops was doing, sending 218 pages with their proposals for how they want to develop our island, that that should be condemned because they got only four days to look into it, and they couldn't even give it to us because it was documentation that they could not share. The Prime Minister went to Holland, and she asked the permission for this information to be possible to share. And what did the State Secretary do? He published it on the website of the Second Chamber. So not of our parliament, not of our government, not for us here in St. Martin. Ask anyone in the street if they know what is in the 218 Dutch documented policy for the coming seven years. That is the transparency of the Dutch. They don't want you to know. Then, the, our own Council of Ministers, they don't want us to know. They read the documents, apparently. I listened to two interviews because we got on the website from the Dutch. 
that 218 page document and we went through it and we started to digest it and started to present already for you what is there in it for we and when we look at it we see that it's a point of the departure of the Dutch all the measures is interesting for them how they want to develop our islands and as we are still in the hurricane season, Minister of Romy, the Honorable Ekba Doran, gave an update on the completion of the various shelters on the island. At the Weekly Council of Ministers Weekly Press Briefing on Wednesday last, the minister told reporters that the first four priority shelters are quite advanced in repairs, and he expounded further. In connection with the first four priority shelters, they are currently quite advanced in repairs and will be finalized by the end of next week. Based on information received from the NRPB, the bid for the remaining nine shelters is currently being evaluated. The NRPB is aiming to award the contract by the beginning of next week to ensure the seamless continuation of these repairs. The expected completion date for the remaining nine shelters is at the end of January 2021. However, during the course of the coming five months, individual shelters will be completed and delivered. Upon complete completion of the evaluation, a tentative timeline of delivery of the remaining nine shelters will also be shared with the general public. I would like to start with the first shelter that has now been renovated, the Rupert Maynard Shelter, just to give a brief elucidation at the works that have been done and still needs to be done. The water tank and generator house, are plastered and painted. The waterproofing has to be done on the inside of the tank and the roof of the generator house. The interior doors, the water tanks and ventilated doors, D3 are installed. The electrical and plumbing works on the inside of the building are done. The electrical works on the generator house and the water tank are currently in the finalization stage. The <clears throat> downspouts are installed and they are still awaiting the installation of the generator. In regards to the Dutch Quarter Community Center, the roof sheet is replaced with the caps. The water tank is being plastered. The water, do water tank doors are already installed. All the ACs are installed. The opening of the generator house is also done and plastered in the section that still needs to be painted. The retaining wall is completed. The existing cistern and water is being pumped out, again, in order to have, the wa to have it waterproof. The extension of the over drain, overflow drain is in place. And also the shutters are 75% completed and should be done, as I mentioned, by next week. They're also waiting the installation of the generators. And as we continue now, National Disaster Coordinator, Fire Chief Clive Richardson, is reminding the St. Martin community not to let their guard down and remain vigilant as we approach the peak period of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season for hurricane development, which runs from mid-August to mid-October. There is currently tropical depression number 11 that is several hundred miles in the Atlantic Ocean, east of the Lesser Antilles, which is a stark reminder that we are in the hurricane season. Even though Tropical Depression 11 does not pose a direct threat to St. Martin at this point in time, residents and the business community are requested to monitor the progress of the system due to the fact that the Tropical Depression is east of the island chain. The depression was expected to become a tropical storm on Wednesday night. If this takes place, it is forecasted that it will be called Josephine. The Office of Disaster Management, ODM, and the Meteorological Department of St. Martin, MDS, will continue to keep you informed as the system approaches the Lesser Antilles. The remaining storm names for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season are Josephine, Kyle, Laura, Marco, Nana, Omar, Paulette, Rene, Sally, Teddy, Vicky, and Wilfred. Remember, it only takes one hurricane to make it a bad season. Be prepared this hurricane season. Now turning to our weather forecast for August the 13th, 2020. At 11 a.m., Tropical Depression 11 became Tropical Storm Josephine and was located about 975 miles east-southeast of St. Martin. 
Josephine is moving toward the west to northwest near 15 miles per hour. On the forecast track, this storm is expected to pass north of St. Martin late Saturday. Maximum sustained winds are near 45 miles per hour with higher gusts. Some additional strengthening is forecast during the next 48 hours. So the outlook through Saturday midday, partly cloudy to cloudy and breezy with isolated showers. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, SSRP coordinator explains more about the payroll support plan from SFB side. I'll have a detail to that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. Welcome back, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Putin. Senior Policy Advisor Christian Granham, speaking to our newsroom recently about the payroll support program, explained that if one did not qualify for the payroll support program, they could still resubmit the application. So if you didn't... You can, you can resubmit the applications, um, but the, the guidelines are clear, right? So in the, in the event of the COVID-19 unemployment, you have to have had a, or have a dismissal letter that states that you were released as a result of COVID. It has to be on a company letterhead. It should be stamped. The company's script number should be there. All of these um, requirements are listed on the website, uh, ssrp.sx. So, um, Let's say, because we had instances, and Parveen can um, expound on that a little later, that where um, individuals applied for COVID-19 unemployment, and they were receiving, their company was receiving uh, payroll support through SNV. So when they did the cross-checks, um, SMDF informed them that, you know, you're receiving payroll support, uh, so you won't qualify for this. Um, so the, the program ended on July, on June 31st. So uh, June, you might have let, been let go because your contract ended or they just, you were just dismissed, right? So then you can now probably qualify so long as the dismissal letter states that you were, you were released as a result of COVID, etc. And Chief Customer Officer at SZV, Mrs. Parveen Burcha, who is also SSRP's coordinator, explains more about the payroll support plan from SZV's side. Mrs. Burcha, speaking to our news department, says that SZV is responsible for executing the payroll support plan for businesses. And um, together with a team within SZV, we are executing the um, payroll support plan for businesses. Um, so, um, just like Mr. Granham mentioned, the unemployment support and income support is managed by the St. Martin Development Fund and the business payroll support is managed by SFV. So, I will um, speak a little bit more about the business part of the payroll support. Our role is to execute it, um, to administrate and um, also to follow up on um, audits. So at this moment we are in the phase um, mostly of execution and um, the, the administration. Um, we just opened the June applications for the businesses. The deadline to submit is um, currently set at Friday the 14th, so that is upcoming Friday. Um, and I would like uh, to uh, ask all businesses if you are considering applying, please read the terms and conditions which are um, located on the website, ssrp.sx. And there you can find um, what the requirements are and conditions are, especially for those companies that did not apply before. Um, some companies were exempted. Um, there was a lot to do about that as well, the exemption list. The exemption list is currently not applicable anymore. So that means that every business 
um, that is experiencing a loss of revenue is in theory um, applicable to the payroll support. So um, if you did not apply before, uh, please read terms and conditions and see if you uh, would, um, yeah, would qualify. And um, even if you're not sure, we still recommend to send in your application. And still to come, Minister of Romi says the second stakeholders meeting was to also receive feedback from their partners. Welcome back, viewers. You're listening and watching SXM Daily News. As the number of COVID cases continue to rise here on the island, Minister of Tayat, Ludmila de Weaver, says that there are a number of measures being worked on in terms of the changes for the ministerial regulation, which is in conjunction with the Ministry of the SA, and it includes the closure of casinos, bars, nightclubs, and adult entertainment at night. That will be done the minute that the ministerial regulation is finalized. The, the measures that are, that are currently being worked on in terms of the changes for the, the ministerial regulation between Minister Ponafleck and myself includes the closure of businesses during the night. So it, right now, we are looking at uh, casinos, adult entertainment, bars, uh, lounges, um, I think that about sums it up. Uh, restaurants, we are still in the process of negotiating whether or not restaurants remain open only for outdoor dining, uh, whether we restrict indoor dining. Um, we agreed uh, yesterday that we would look into it further based on the recommendation that we are getting from the medical professionals in this. But what I can say with certainty is that casinos, bars, nightclubs, lounges will be closed the minute our ministerial regulation is finalized. And as you said yourself, uh, Ms. Shaw, uh, that the, the prevalence of the cases is amongst the, the younger uh, population between the ages of 20 to 40 years old. And uh, as you know, it is that the clusters are surrounding them in these venues that we are looking to control. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for you this evening, viewers, with regards to the National Development Vision, the second stakeholder session took place recently, and according to the Minister of Romi, Ekba Doran, the second stakeholders meeting was held, and it was not only to provide elucidation on the respective pillars, but to also receive feedback from their partners. He gives more insight. Firstly, in regards to the stakeholder session on the National Development Vision, NDV, the second stakeholders session took place yesterday, August 11th. These sessions serve not only to provide elucidation on the respective pillars, but moreover to receive feedback from our partners. Feedback that will further shape and broaden our goals for St. Martin. On Tuesday, the discussion was being held with the pillar two with the team of strong and resilient economy. The vision is to transform St. Martin into a compassionate, strong and decisive country that will economically be resilient and capable of sustaining its own development and providing an enhanced quality of life and well-being for the generations to come. The presently, the stakeholders are the Chambers of Commerce, the Central Bank of Curacao and St. Martin, SZV, APS, St. Martin Development Funds, and Credits. All these respective institutions have their representatives representing them in these meetings. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you so much for joining me this evening. Just a reminder, however, that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. 
And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.